in a world where a girl is moving, she has to face some of the most difficult times of her life. Trademark Lizzie Hinshaw. Lizzie Hinshaw, three apartments, only one decision. What will she do? How will she make this decision? What tips and tricks will she use? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a super exciting video that I've been wanting to film for as long as I've lived in Laramie because I am moving to Denver. It feels so good to say I'm moving to Denver. I kind of explained a little bit more in one of my last videos. I will go ahead and link it on the screen if you want to catch up. This video, as you can see from the title, is all about my Denver apartment hunting journey. And you're gonna get a really good perspective on this because I actually am a housing consultant. I have worked for student housing before and apartment complexes and that's kind of what I looked into when I was renting. I was looking to move to another apartment complex so those are the ones that I have looked at in Denver but I wanted to just give you my perspective of the leasing process, everything from fees to deposits to co-signers and pretty much all the information that you would want to know if you are planning on renting an apartment. It was kind of like the the first like big move that I did um, coming to this apartment and I moved here by myself my mom didn't like hold my hand through the process so I had to kind of do everything myself it was a really good learning experience but if I can help any one of you kind of have a better experience then that's what I'm trying to do with this video without further ado if you haven't subscribed to my channel already I would suggest subscribing because I mean hello it's me I am doing a ton of moving vlogs coming soon, um, apartment transformation videos, and you will actually see the apartment that I chose in this video. I am, I don't know why I'm wearing a sweater right now. I am hot, like 90 degrees outside, and I was not built for this, so hold on one second. Alrighty. We're sticking with the green. We're gonna pretend like you didn't just see my bra straps. But yes, as I was saying, um, I am gonna be showing the apartment that I chose in this video. So if you want kind of a little empty apartment tour of my next place, then keep watching. But let's first get into some of the tips that I have from the perspective of a housing consultant so that I can give you kind of a better insight. There's some important stuff and you could be paying some big fines if you don't do the first thing on my list, which is <laughs> read the actual housing agreement or lease before you sign it. I cannot stress this enough. You will find things about any type of fees that you can be charged. And yes, there are hidden fees sometimes in apartments, but it's not hidden because it's in the lease that you sign. Just saying. Um, I'm also making this video to get some of my anger out as a housing consultant, so like just, you know, scratch that. Um, no, but I, I am trying to give you guys credible advice and my first piece of advice is always read the freaking lease in full. Just read it all. Make sure you understand it. If you have questions, ask questions because once you sign it, there's no going back. Well, once it's countersigned, there's no going back. And every single housing agreement is different. The ones that I dealt with are on a yearly basis. A lot of places go on, you know, you can like choose the duration of your lease, but it can change the rent amount. It may not cost exactly what you think if you want a three month lease as opposed to a 12 month lease. Shorter span leases usually cost more per month because basically the property is taking a bigger risk on you. You want to read the lease in full because it goes over things like if you do need to get out of your lease for some reason, if a global pandemic happens, if your grandma is sick and you need to take care of her, I mean anything really. So it's always good to know your exit strategies. Like for example, where I work, you can't just pay a fee and get out of your lease. You have to find a subleaser and we don't help you find that subleaser at all. So it's kind of like all on you and that makes a lot of people angry, to be perfectly blunt. It's in the lease that you signed. I mean, like, I, it's hard to kind of sympathize with people that, like, don't read any of their lease. So specifically when apartment hunting in Denver, um, they do have some different rules and regulations when it comes to their leases. And it's really just dependent on whatever apartment complex or, you know, privately owned apartments, houses, duplexes, whatever you're doing, every single person is different with it. So it's really, really a good idea to look at a bunch of different options, whether that be online or in person. But I would definitely say um, for Colorado, the best time to move would probably be 
in the summertime. There's gonna be the most places available and not to mention winter in Colorado is cold. It's hard to move. It's just a little bit more difficult. It's not impossible or anything and there's plenty of apartments to rent all year round. So I kind of touched on fees earlier. When you read your lease you can see things that the apartment complex may charge for. Some key ones to look out for is transferring. So let's say that you get into your new apartment and you hate it or your neighbors are really loud. If you've read your lease, you know if you can transfer or not the cost of transferring. For example, here at this complex, it's a $200 transfer fee, but I just read the housing agreement at my new place and it's like a $1,500 transfer fee. So it's a lot heftier if you wanted to transfer there. So another thing I wanna get into is financial backing or income requirements. Every single apartment, you have to back your contract financially in some way. This varies for a lot of different things. My new apartment, for example, they did a, a credit check on my boyfriend and I, and then a combined income check and it basically was like monthly income from your job or whatever and then you can put any additional income for the year. They don't normally check. If you put in that you make enough, you're most likely going to be fine with those types of things. Now you have to play it by ear because some places do require pay stubs. So normally places only require one of those, but sometimes they can do a combination. I was talking to the housing consultant at my new place um, and I asked if we needed a guarantor or a co-signer if we didn't have enough monthly income. He said if we didn't have enough income, they would let us know, they would give us a call and we could either change the income, which means basically add more. They, they don't they don't check, they just want the number there. Um, there's no way to really check that unless you show them physical pay stub. But he said if we didn't make enough, then we may just have to pay a larger deposit. A few more things, then I'll get into the apartment tours. I did just wanna give you guys some really good tips from a housing consultant's point of view so that you are just more informed when you are renting apartments. So the next thing on my list is concessions and discounts. Not every single place does this. Some do it much heavier than other places. Like this is college housing that I'm living in right now and we have a new concession twice a month or maybe just once a month. We take certain amounts off depending on the time you sign. Later in the year, concessions may get higher. So you may get a bigger discount depending on how late you are to the game, how late you sign. But this also does close up other options because you know, say you're the last person signing for a two bedroom, you're not gonna get to choose your roommate. So there's like a caveat, a cornucopia, if you will, of problems that can occur if you do wait to sign until the very last minute. But that's more with student housing because with regular housing, you just have people moving in at all different times, moving out at all different times. The place that I signed for had no concessions, nothing, so they weren't running any like deals and I think that's pretty common for these types of places. But one of them, she was willing to negotiate with me and that's something I kind of want to get into next is that it's okay to negotiate. If you're like, I'm gonna sign a lease for this place, if you know that, then you might as well use that to your advantage and kind of do like, I would say something like this. So give it to me straight, like how much is this place? You know, are utilities included? I'm really interested. Well, let's see. So our rent price is 525 and our utilities is $20 a month, so it comes to $5.45. Well, I'm really interested in this place. Like, I, I think I want it. Um, so if I signed today, would you be willing to take an extra $10 off every month? Oh, I can see you're very interested. Okay, yeah, sure, I'll talk to my boss about that and maybe we can we can make something happen for you. Yeah, sounds great. I will literally sign it right now. I'm so excited and I can't wait to live here. Hello, yes, we've got a negotiator. Yes, but she's gonna sign today. Oh, okay, perfect, I'll let her know. Yes, we would be happy to give you $10 off if you were to sign the paperwork today. Let's go back to the office and make that happen for you. And that is how it's done. No, I mean, that was a little cheesy, but you can ask, don't be afraid. 
So the first apartment that I toured was a little bit out of my price range and it was set up in a really interesting way. I did actually like this one a lot. You went in the entryway and then went directly upstairs, but to the right there was a garage that looked like it could actually fit two cars. When you go up the stairs, um, immediately you see the kitchen and it was a beautiful kitchen. I really, really liked the backsplash and the color scheme that was used. It was very white, clean, and crisp. And then it just kind of went into the living room. It had like a sort of small bathroom. It wasn't anything crazy. Um, I think most of the money went into the kitchen, which I really did love the kitchen. I also loved the flooring of this one. It was kind of that like gray wood, which is just really in style right now. And I just think is really tasteful. And the balcony was fairly small small but to have a balcony would be nice but it would have been facing directly at someone else so it didn't have like an amazing view or anything and it was a little bit out of my price range but it was overall a really nice apartment I didn't dislike it or anything it was about $16.50 like I said with no utilities included nothing so I mean you add on utilities probably add another hundred dollars on a month I don't know why but this one I just was not getting good vibes from like the housing consultant I just didn't really like her very much the next apartment that I looked at I thought it would be really nice nice from the amenities. It had a really really sick pool like the pool was just beautiful. Once I saw the apartment and like the whole place it kind of seemed more of like a vacation rental place to me and just not like a place I would want to spend that much to live full time. The apartment itself was pretty dated. It had like that chestnut really red wood cabinet and I just ugh, I'm just not a fan of that had old carpeting, you know, old appliances, older appliances, and it just really wasn't amazing. I wasn't super impressed by it. it. Had some really ugly paint on the walls, but she did say I could paint. And this was also the housing consultant that was really salesy towards me. So she was willing to negotiate with me and I'll get into that a little bit later, but it was funny. She mentioned on the tour that there was no smoking allowed, but I definitely smelt a little bit of 420 or like a lot of it. And she was really trying to like relate to me on like a college girl level. She's like, I feel like I can talk to you like we're friends. Sorry, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but it just, you know. You know when things come off as fake and salesy and that's just one of those times. And there were a lot of units that were very close to each other. You know, it was kind of set up like a hotel almost and it just wasn't very big. And this one was about 1500 I want to say. I don't know. I just, she asked me if I wanted to like sign on the spot and I really wasn't that in love with it at all. She was like, well, we'd be willing to negotiate because you had to pay for parking too. So actually it wasn't even about 1500. It was about, mm, I want to say like 1300. No, 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 no. It was about 1400 and then you had to pay a hundred dollars for parking on top of that. And I was like, oh, well, like, can I just do street parking? And she's like, oh no, you have to do our parking. Say the rent is 1400, but then they add extra fees on. Something to look out for. As a sales consultant, I just try to be very upfront with people about what the fees are, what the cost is. And if it's an included cost that you have to pay, just included in the rent price. And she was making me late to my next appointment to see it's a really great place. Spoiler alert, it's the place we chose. It is about 850 square feet and it comes out to be about 1500 a month. So, I mean, we'll pay about 750 each for that. And it is just so beautiful. The kitchen has updated appliances. It has this white marble countertop. Sorry, I didn't get amazing clips of everything. It's my first time doing one of these videos, so. Yeah, and it has a little balcony too, and our balcony would actually overlook like a little green area. It is like in a cluster of apartments, which, you know, it is what it is. That's what we chose. That's what we wanted because we also wanted the amenities that came along with it. We especially loved this one because of the bathroom. It had a nice double sink and a huge bathtub and it did have a little laundry room too and a really, really sizable bedroom space, dining room, living room. The living room actually isn't huge, but 
it, it'll it'll work and we really really like the area we landed in broomfield colorado so it's about 20 minutes from downtown 15 minutes from boulder which is really really nice so we're close to some major areas but we're also close to a bunch of trailheads and kind of closer to nature it's a little more tucked away than being in the city itself which was really important to me because i like quiet but yeah that's the apartment that we decided to go with i'm really really happy with the decision we signed our lease two days ago so it's all official now. Oh, I'll let you know because we're talking about apartments. Um, the admin fee was $400. We didn't have to pay a deposit. We self-qualified with the income that we make. So that's all we had to pay up front. And then just our first month's rent, we move in on the fourth. So look out for some moving vlogs, some moving videos, room transformations, apartment tours, empty apartment tours. It's all coming and I'm so, so excited to kind of move my content from Wyoming to Denver. There's just a lot more stuff there, um, a lot more interesting things to do. Even though it's COVID, there's at least a target there. That is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are new and you just discovered my channel, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram at lizbiz47. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it really does support my channel and it makes me feel like this whole thing is worth it. If you if you have any other questions about apartments or leasing, leave them down in the comments below. I will respond to every single comment and try to help you as best as I can. Have a wonderful day and I will talk to you guys soon.